you were to just call the insurance company up and say, hey, I would like to get a reimbursement increase, they would tell you to get lost. So again, you know, we understand how they work, we understand their red tape, and we understand what it takes to get those increases. Uh, there's been many circumstances where we work with a physician who says that we tried to negotiate on our own, or we worked with another individual or company that negotiates reimbursement rates or a billing company, and nothing happened. Many times we're able to get pretty sizable increases for these groups because we don't like to give up with the insurance companies. The negotiation may take three to six months sometimes, sometimes even longer, but we're not going to accept their answer of, of no. Welcome to the Regenerative Warrior Podcast, Doctor's Edition. One of the fastest growing regenerative medicine and anti-aging podcasts in the world. Each and every Tuesday and Thursday, I talk to the top experts to show doctors how to market, manage, and magnify their practice to help more people and make more money. Each episode is short and to the point without wasting your time with pointless conversation. Learn the skills to be successful without traveling to seminars or paying for expensive consulting fees. Are you ready? Because I am. I'm Dr. Ross Carter, and it's time to start the Regenerative Warrior Podcast now. Hi, this is Dr. Ross Carter with the Regenerative Warrior Podcast. Today, my special guest is Nathaniel Arana. Welcome. Thanks for taking the call today. Thank you. Perfect. Now, I found your topic very interesting. I had not heard about this as a something that people did, but you help doctors negotiate with insurance companies. Is that accurate? Tell me a little more about that. That's correct. There's a notion out there that the rates that the insurance companies provide to physician groups are the only rates that are available. Uh, the reality is that those rates vary greatly among physicians, even within the same geographic area of the same specialty type. So our job is to convey and correlate to the insurance payers why a particular physician group or physician should get a better reimbursement rate. The thing about reimbursement rates is that they are either A, stagnant, or they've even reduced over the years. But with inflation, what that essentially means is that year after year, your medical practice is losing about 5% of their revenue over the previous year. And in a few other businesses, does such a thing happen? Wow. I had no idea that it was that bad. And so as a small practitioner, I mean, that's not something they look at. They don't probably even know what their rates are, I assume. Isn't that common? That's very commonplace where nobody knows what they're being paid by the insurance companies. The reason knowing what you're being paid is so important is because you want to make sure that your insurance contracts are are performing the way that they should be. If you were to put an analysis together, for example, and you found out that one of your payers was paying 20% less than what the other payers are paying you, then that's an indication to you that you need to get a hold of somebody at that network and see what you can do to fix that. Again, when you're able to benchmark your rates against Medicare, suddenly you have a baseline to where you can more easily look at your performance, not only this year, but over the previous years and potentially over the future years. So when an insurance company negotiates a rate, don't they just typically send you a sheet with the code and the amount that they'll allow? Is that is that accurate? That's completely accurate. And what they're doing, especially when you're in new practice, is they understand that you have an urgency to get your contracts in place because without your contracts, you're not going to get paid. So they use that as their own leverage to give you the minimum viable rates that they believe that you're going to accept. The reality is that you as a physician or physician group are an important part of that insurance company's product that they're selling to their individuals and employer groups. Without the physicians, the insurance companies have absolutely nothing to sell. And our entire premise has always been that we need to reassert the physician's authority over the healthcare system the physician-patient relationship and over the insurance company. And one of the ways we do that is by negotiating rates, by coming back to them and saying, we're not going to accept 60% of Medicare. That's not going to help our business out. We're not going to allow you to be one of the payers that is looking to be the volume contribution to our practice. Again, it's reasserting the physician who holds more power than they may realize they have. Well, yeah, because I didn't even think that was possible. 
And can they opt you out on certain areas if you just don't agree on a rate on a certain procedure? Or do they just say, we're not going to use you at all? So they tend not to like carve-outs because it doesn't fit well within their systems. But, you know, again, if you are the only physician in a rural area of a certain specialty, or if you're in an area where there are a few primary care providers, you have more leverage to the insurance company to get a higher rate. Well, it sounds like you're playing poker here. You're going to see who's going to call the bluff here. Wouldn't a provider typically be afraid that they're just not going to be a part of any of these networks? And the the insurance will basically blackball them and say, well, we're not going to work with you. I mean, isn't that the fear? There is a a certain amount of fear associated with that, certainly. But the reality is, is that if you have, let's say, five payer contracts and one of them is grossly underpaying you, then after a certain reimbursement amount, you may be losing money by seeing those patients, you know, especially since the overhead is so high. You know, some of these insurance payers make it so difficult to even bill and collect in the first place that the overhead associated with even billing and collecting from them is 30% or more. So when you're taking into account that some of these payers are paying such a low rate, plus the amount of money it takes you to actually bill and collect from them, it may be a better business decision to not even participate in their networks. And again, when you are offering a specialized service or a unique service, a service that keeps people out of the emergency room, a service that is providing value to the patients, then you have a story to tell and you have some leverage in your negotiation strategy. There are additional negotiation strategies that you can utilize, including working directly with employer groups who are the clients of the insurance payers and developing relationships with them, particularly those that are self-funded, to the point to where the the employer group becomes your advocate and says, no, I want this guy in my network. I want this facility in my network. I want this group in my network. Otherwise, I'm going to drop you as my payer and I'm going to go with somebody else who does have them. Now, there's different types of doctor situations here. Like, for example, what is a concierge doctor? So concierge doctors are doctors that charge a premium um, to see patients Uh, or have patients on their panel. A lot of times they still participate with insurance companies. Sometimes they don't. Typically the rate for a concierge doctor is $1,500 up to $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, depending on geographic location and the services offered. That's in contrast to another type of service called direct primary care, where it's a lower cost, more middle-class concierge doctor solution. Typically, they charge somewhere in the range of $50 to $100 per month, which is much more affordable. They offer extended visits. They offer contact with the physician after hours and on weekends, and they don't participate with the insurance company. And what that does is it takes that 30% of your overhead that's dedicated to billing and collecting from the insurance company. Uh, It allows you to offer your medical services at a lower cost and make more money. Think about it this way. You have car insurance, but you don't use your car insurance by windshield wipers or tires or get annual service, i.e. checkups. Right. You don't even use your car insurance for a four to $5,000 repair bill. The insurance is only used in your car when you have a very catastrophic event such as an accident or property damage. And I think that we need to come back to that model in the healthcare arena because there's no reason that we should have this convoluted system where there's an employee who pays premiums to their employer and then the employer pays their premium to the insurance company and then the insurance company pays their reimbursement over to the physician. There are too many levels and layers here that are taking away efficiencies and are dictating the way that physicians should and should not practice medicine. Whenever you reestablish the patient physician relationship whenever you can keep physicians autonomous you actually lower healthcare costs and increase outcomes when you have corporate practice of medicine with physicians being employed you actually decrease outcomes and increase costs and that's not the way that we want to be going so what is the solutions or are there solutions out there to help with this issue so one of the solutions is Number one, assert yourself against the payers as far as your reimbursement rate goes. But also, we're working with different physicians, not only primary care, but specialists as well, to find creative ways to connect them directly with patients and keep the insurance company 
out of the equation because the reality is that the insurance companies stifle innovation. They create this convoluted system that we have, and I'll give you one example of that. The insurance companies typically do not cover telemedicine visits between a physician and a patient. A lot of times they will cover them between a physician and another physician if if they are consulting. But the idea that you have to be face-to-face with a patient in order to get paid is silly in this day and age. A good portion of patient visits could be provided electronically and thus more efficiently. But again, the insurance companies don't want efficiency in the system. The insurance companies are not incentivized to save money. The Affordable Care Act implemented a, a funny sort of rule that said that insurance companies had to spend 80% of their revenue on claims and only 20% could be allocated to administration. Well, the unintended consequence of that was that suddenly the more money that you spend as a insurance company, the more money that you're going to make and add to your profit. So the insurance companies are actually not always incentivized to save money. Wow. Not good things. So as a doctor, they're listening and they're like thinking, I need to check my plan and make sure that I'm getting paid. How do they even start that process? What's the best way to determine which payers you should keep and which ones you should uh, eliminate? So we actually have a guide and a template on our website that you could look at that shows you exactly how to benchmark your reimbursement rates. It's relatively simple. Somebody in your office could probably do it for you following this guide. Um, but it's very important to do again, as I mentioned. I can imagine. Now, is this mainly applied to rural doctors or is this, you know, can it apply to doctors that are, you know, have a lot of competitors in the area? I mean, if you have a lot of competition and they take the insurance, do you have less negotiation ability? Actually, that's not the case. It's not just rural physicians. It's physicians in the cities as well particularly if you're a small to mid-sized practice, let's say you're under 20 physicians. If you're working in an area where, for example, there's another group and there's 50 physicians in that group and your group has five physicians or 10 physicians, the chances are that the larger group has much better rates than you're getting. And the last thing that the insurance company wants to see is either all of those physicians or even some of those physicians move and go work for the larger group because they're going to suddenly be paying more. And so the threat of consolidation is another important strategy to look at because insurance companies don't want that consolidation. They can't control their network if it's not made up of more fragmented providers. So not just rural, but also physicians in larger cities have many, many different opportunities and leverage strategies that they can use, not just the threat of consolidation, but also, again, We look at how your outcomes are impacting the system as a whole, and if we can make arguments that show and demonstrate either immediate or downstream cost savings to the payer, then we have a good argument for better rates. So a physician is now interested, he's listening to this, and he decides, I want somebody to help me. How does this process start? How do they go about doing that? So if you wanted to get in touch with us, we have a lot of resources on our website. You can check out a lot of blogs, a lot of information, a lot of different examples of of how we've helped different physician groups and clients. And that's the best way to get started. Perfect. And then do you basically contact the insurance companies and start the process of negotiation of of rates? We we do that. We do that after we collect information from you, after we discuss strategy, after we determine what our strategy is going to be and what our value proposition is. The value proposition is a very important document that we create for our clients, and it's essentially the argument that you can't argue against that you should give this physician or group a reimbursement increase. It's typically you know, anywhere from five to even sometimes 20, 30 pages long, depending on what we're working on. And again, we collect the data and we make the argument that any lay person that reads it would say, ah, this is somebody that we need to work with on their reimbursement rates. Because again, you know, we want to make sure that we're parlaying our argument. That document is also a qualifying argument to even speak with the insurance company again, because if you were to just call the insurance company up and say, hey, I would like to get a reimbursement increase, they would tell you to get lost. So again, you know, we understand how they work, we understand their red tape, and we understand what it takes to get those increases. Uh, There's been many circumstances where 
we work with a physician who says that we try to negotiate on our own, or we work with another individual or company that negotiates reimbursement rates or a billing company, and nothing happened. Many times we're able to get pretty sizable increases for these groups because we don't like to give up with the insurance companies. The negotiation may take three to six months sometimes, sometimes even longer, but we're not going to accept their answer of, of no. Sounds awesome. I like it. So if someone who was listening to the podcast was interested, do you have a special offer that you'd like to give them? Yeah. So we are willing to offer $250 off of our fixed fee that we charge for our negotiation services if you mention this podcast. Perfect. That sounds great. All right. Is there anything we're missing? Uh, No, I don't think so. Just my final message is sometimes the bully has to be bullied. And, you know, I, I think it's important that physicians reassert themselves against the insurance companies because without them, they're nothing. That's all the time we have. If you're looking for the best companies for stem cell products, exosomes, marketing, consulting, or other products and services, please call us at 866-9-WARRIOR for the best options. Mention this podcast for special pricing and offers. That's 866-9-WARRIOR or 866-992-7746. Also, you can click the subscribe button below to be notified of all new episodes and please like and share this podcast with others. If you found value in this episode, please comment and review that will help this podcast grow. If you'd like to learn more about this or any other speaker, click on the show notes or visit us at regenerativewarrior.com. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, we'd love to have you. Just go to our website and click the application link. You can contact me at Dr. Ross Carter at regenerativewarrior.com with show ideas or if you'd like me to present at your event. Until next time, this is Dr. Ross Carter signing off. Signing off.